Well, greetings viewers and warriors with Gothic Funk, and this is a video response to Tommy from the Bronx, who answered the three questions I posted him last week. Uh, thank you for pulling your finger out, Tommy. I really appreciate it. And just as an aside, my friend, I have to say the Grecian formula is working wonders on your beard. You can barely tell. Uh, anyway, um, right, Tommy asked me three questions, which I'm more than happy to answer. And uh, let us get straight to the meat and the bones of it, shall we? His first question was about conspiracy theories. He said, which conspiracy theory do I think is the biggest load of bullshit? And which conspiracy theory do I think might be credible? Well, uh, it, it, the biggest bullshit one is, is hard because there's so much competition for that one. Um, part of me wants to say the moon landings, but I think overall uh, there's bigger bullshit conspiracy theories than that one. Um, and I'm going to go for the whole chemtrails uh, conspiracy theory. This idea that jets leaving trails across the sky uh, are somehow uh, adulterating our atmosphere with some kind of... Uh, toxins or whatever. I think the idea is so far past ridiculous that words actually fail me. Um, my main reason, and there are many reasons to disbelieve the chemtrails conspiracy theory, but my main reason is this, and it's pretty fucking simple really. Whoever the powers that be are behind this supposed conspiracy, they have to breathe the same fucking air we do. And there is absolutely no way that uh, something being dispersed uh, several miles overhead can have any level of control as to where it's going to fall. Uh, so quite frankly, no one in the position of power necessary to get away with this evil conspiracy in secret uh, could be immune from its effects. Um, these chemtrails are all over the place. And just beggars believe to me that anybody would think that not only could such a thing be done on such a massive scale of worldwide in a clandestine fashion, which is beyond ridiculous as well, but the idea that people behind it would be suffering from the same effects as, as those of us they're trying to victimize, just to me shoots the whole thing down right there. Nobody in a position of uh, great wealth and power is going to want to breathe these toxins any more than any, any of the rest of us do. So it's just completely obvious bullshit to me. Um, which conspiracy theory do I think might be true? Well, there, there's a couple that contend for me there as well, but basically for me it's an open and shut case as far as that goes. I do believe that there was more than one gunman at the Kennedy assassination. I'm talking about John F. Kennedy's assassination. I just happen to believe the same thing about Robert Kennedy's assassination, but that's a different story. As far as JFK's assassination goes, um, it seems pretty clear that there was a bullet from the front or side of the car as well as any, any that may or may not have come from behind. And um, it's already been proved that the uh, rifle that was supposedly used by Lee Harvey Oswald could not have fired three shots in the six seconds um, that the shots came in. It physically couldn't be done. And uh, I find facts like that, amongst others, extremely compelling. And uh, the fact is, when you watch other footage, not just the Zapruder f uh, film, which is very famous, seeing Kennedy's head go back as if he was shot from the front and side, not just that, but if you see other, and you can see this footage here on YouTube, I believe, but um, there's another angle, which uh, is from the other side of the Dealey Plaza, and uh, when the shots rang out, literally everyone on the street, literally everyone, turned over to look at the grassy knoll, and people started running in that direction. Everyone who was there thought that's where the shots came from at the time. So to me, uh, there's lots of reasons to believe it was a, a setup, um, and I'm not going to go into all of them. But to me, if I had to pick one conspiracy theory that I think has some validity behind it, JFK's assassination would be at the very top of my list. All right, uh, next, Tommy from the Bronx says, uh, what movie might I like to be the star of? And uh, he says I can't be the star of any kind of a porn movie because of course uh, I'm endowed like this according to Tommy. Um, well you know Tommy, uh, I'm not even going to bite that hook. I, I, I'm just going to leave it there floating. Um, but I have to say that I wouldn't star in a porn movie anyways because I don't even watch porn movies. Uh, hard as that may be for you to believe. 
um, pornography doesn't really do anything for me. Uh, it's just so obviously fake and stuff that I just it just doesn't do anything for me. Yeah, you know, I, it's like watching flies fuck. I mean, it's about that exciting. Anyway, um, so what movie would I star in, and uh, what role would I play? And uh, that's kind of a toughie, really. Um, I think I might like to star in Purple Rain and play the part of Prince in Purple Rain, or the kid, as his character is known in that movie. Uh, because I think, you know, Prince is unassailably cool. I really liked that movie when it came out, and, um, you know, he got to have his hands all over Apollonia, uh, which is always a bonus. So, yeah, um, I think I'd star in Purple Rain and uh, just have that as my little accomplishment in the back of my pocket. Uh, which brings me on to question number three. Tommy from the Bronx wants to know, what one thing would I like to accomplish the most before I die? Something that really matters to me. And, uh, you know, I have said in videos gone by years ago that many of the things that I grew up wanting to accomplish I've actually already done. And, uh, you know, I'm very pleased about that because it does take a lot of pressure off of living. Uh, you know, um, however, there are, is one or two things that I definitely want to accomplish before I die. This year, 2013, at the beginning of the year, I was supposed to go to India. I'd been planning it for years um, because there's a, a festival in India called the Kumbh Mela. That's K-U-M-B-H, new word, M-E-L-A. Google it. Anyway, the Kumbh uh, happens every 12 years, and uh, it's the largest gathering of human beings anywhere on Earth. Uh, the Grand Kumbh was in 2001. That happens every 144 years. Um, and then there's a main coom every 12 years, and then mini coombs every four years, or uh, sorry, every three years. Anyway, um, and on the main coom, uh, you know, the, it's, uh, the, the festival lasts for about a month, and what it is is people coming down to where the two holy rivers converge, and they essentially baptize themselves, although of course it's not called baptism, but you, you put, dunk yourself in the water, and you come out reborn as a new person, cleansed of all your... Uh, sins and whatever. Now, of course, I don't really believe in sin and uh, or rebirth or anything like that, but I do fancy the uh, the pilgrimage is something I wanted to do. I, I want very much to know what it's like to be in a crowd of people, 25 million strong, all there for the same reason. Uh, that has got to be an immense experience. It's got to be something that you can't I mean, most countries don't even have 25 million people in them. And I'm also interested, not just from the spiritual point of view, but I'm also interested from the uh, practical point of view. I mean, uh, where do all these people take a shit, you know? Um, how do you feed 25 million people? How do you accommodate 25 million people? Most countries don't even have 25 million people in them. So for the people at the Coombe to be that crowded and uh, from all over the world and stuff, I just think it would be an experience that I would never forget and something that I'm determined not to deny myself. And now, unfortunately, I've got to wait until 2025 for the next big coom, because I'd rather go to one of the big ones and not one of the quarterly ones. Um, the other thing that was sort of uh, contending for what I'd like to do, uh, what I'd like to accomplish before I die, I know this sounds like completely fantastic, but I don't care, because it's uh, something that I, I, I actually do want to accomplish. I would like to be the first person in history to live to be 150 years old. So what do I want to accomplish before I die? I want to celebrate my 150th birthday, which means I've got 99 years to go. Um, yeah, I think it's possible. I think with medical advancements and uh, you know staying out of trouble and taking care of myself, uh, might just do it. Might not. Probably won't. But um, I think a life that spanned 150 years uh, would be pretty good as long as I was relatively mobile and still in possession of all my faculties. Uh, because just, you know, being able to look over the expanse of one's life if you live that long and see all of the changes in society and, you know, technological advancements. I mean, civilization could rise and fall in that amount of time. Uh, well, maybe not rise, but, you know, could fall and then start climbing back up again. 
uh, in that amount of time. One does not know. The future is completely unwritten and quite fascinating. And I would like to live it for as long as I possibly can. Again, assuming I've got my marbles and, uh, and uh, some level of quality of life. So which of those would I like to accomplish the most? Well, I suppose if I had to pick one, uh, I would pick the Kum Mela, uh, simply because it's something more achievable and realistic. Um, yeah, I would have gone earlier this year, but uh, when I had to close my shop last year, uh, it did sort of leave me bereft of funds, and uh, that was kind of a bummer, because it was something I was looking forward to since 2001. And, uh, but there's absolutely no way that I'm going to miss the next one even if I have to start walking right now. Thankfully, I don't. But it sounds like a good place to make a pilgrimage, doesn't it? Anyway, Tommy, uh, thank you for your questions, and thank you for the exchange. I really appreciate it. And um, listen, man, if I ever make it that uh, part of the world, me and you we definitely got to have a beer. In the meantime, thanks to everybody for watching, and may all your ups and downs be ups.